Hello, everyone, and thank you for tuning in to Fran Coaches Franchising 101 podcast series. I am Tim Parmeter, your host and founder of Fran Coach. Uh, Fran Coach is a national search firm dedicated to helping people find the absolute best franchise for them to own. Our podcasts are designed to take a brief look at some of the most relevant topics and questions we hear from our clients as they explore franchise ownership. Uh, we hope our podcasts help you have a better understanding of what franchising is all about to see if it might possibly be a good fit for you. Today, we want to talk about um, a, a question that comes up quite often. Um, we are partnered with over 500 franchises in about 60 different industries, which is an incredibly wide range of things. Uh, further complicated, uh, kind of that range is the fact that we can have two franchises, and in and, and many, many industries, this is the case, two franchises that to the consumer, they do the same thing, uh, whether it's selling sandwiches or cleaning your bathroom. But behind the scenes, that franchise is completely different from what they look for in an owner, sales, marketing, training, support, culture across the board. So that, that range of 500 franchises and 60 industries is even wider than I think people realize. Um, so oftentimes we'll hear with all of these different things, well, what does a franchise really look for in an owner? What are, what are, what, what makes the best owner? Um, so, and again, there's a lot of different possible things that we could, we could look at for this. So I, I guess when you think of what is the absolute main thing a franchise would look for in an owner, Anyone want to take a guess what that is? Just shout them out. Nope, not even close. Try again. N nope, that one's wrong too. Hey, no, keep, you keep shouting all day long and, and really it's not, the, it's not what people think. The absolute main thing that a franchise looks for is someone that is willing to and able to execute and follow a proven plan. Just think about that for a second. To, that they are willing to and able to execute and follow a proven plan and a proven system. So um, pretty sure that's not what people thought. Uh, most people are going to look at this and go, well, Jesus, is, is a background in sales the best way? Um, is it marketing? Is it finance? Is it operations? Um, is it this level of leadership versus that le level of leadership? And the answer is really no to all of those things. Um, each of those different categories and skill sets may point us to a different franchise, somebody that's great in sales versus someone that's great in uh, finance or, or operations, we may, we may look at a different type of owner model for those people, but it's not the driver behind all of this. So um, to take a step back for a second, understand first and foremost, we at Fran Coach and franchises everywhere, we work with smart, successful people all day, every day. Um, anywhere from a maybe a really talented mid-level manager kind of languishing away in the abyss of the corporate world to the directors, the VPs, the C-level um, executives, presidents, and other entrepreneurs and, and, and owners of startups. Um, all across the board, they're talented, they're successful. In many of these cases, they have been running a big chunk of somebody else's business and, been, and done a very, very good job at that. Um, there are times, and I don't think this people mean this in a bad way necessarily, where, where folks will come off like, you know, well, I don't know if you've worked with somebody like me with my background. Yeah, yeah, we have, right? Um, no matter what those kind of talented backgrounds are, be proud of them. It's impressive. It's fantastic. But in the franchising world, it's the old, uh, going to date myself here, old country song from the 90s. With Shania Twain, that don't impress me much. Um, don't worry, I won't sing it for you. Um, but that's not what really is going to impress a franchise. It's not what's going to make somebody want you as an owner is bullet points number one, two, three, four on your resume. Um, that's not it. It's can you follow and are you willing to follow a proven system? That's what you are really kind of buying into with the franchise and for a franchise to award it to you, they want to see that above all else. Um, why is that following a plan important? Well, what is the franchise all about? Is they have gone through all of the trials and errors and, and, and kind of 
startup pain to create a business model that works, that is replicable, um, and all of the different things that go into this. So a simple example I use with folks is, and I'm going to use a food example, think of Subway. Um, if I'm sitting here thinking, I don't need Subway, I'm going to start Tim Sandwich Shop because I make really probably one of the best peanut butter and jelly sandwiches you've ever had. So I want to I, I, I want to start the sandwich. I got a great PB and J. I got a great ham and cheese. These are awesome sandwiches. I, I don't need Subway. So what do I have to figure out? Well, I have to figure out how to replicate that brand. So every single time somebody comes in, they know they're getting the exact same sandwich, no matter what they order. Very consistent brand, whether it's how to slice the ham, slice the tomatoes, whatever that that might be. I got to figure out. Where do I buy the napkins? Are are these good napkins? Are they bad napkins? Will they hold up? Are this at a good price? Is that a bad price? Every last tiny little thing of this business, I have to completely figure out. Um, Those are the tangible things, not to mention, uh, I got to create a website. Do I need a mobile app, Uh, SEO, pay-per-click? What do those things even mean? How do I do them? How do I organize that? Everything. So now come back and, t- and take a step back. And if that sounds overwhelming, it's because it's overwhelming. So the franchise, now I start Subway. Everything is laid out. There is a detailed plan on how to slice the tomatoes, where to get the napkins. Marketing is in place. I need to be able to follow that. I need to ex- implement it. I need to execute it. Once I've done that, then now I can enhance it. But that is the biggest thing. Uh, when people think that they have all of the answers, which sometimes come, there there are folks, and we've probably all done that at times, want to come across, uh, you know, hey, based on my experience, I know all this. If you think, really, you know better than the franchise, then that is going to be a great indicator. Franchise ownership is not right for you. And also, the franchise is going to kind of help you with that as well. That's not going to be the right fit. Implement, execute a proven system and plan, then be able to enhance, but enhance within the brand. So a subway owner may think, oh my gosh, we're, we're, we're rolling along. We've got this implemented. We're executing it like crazy. Things are going well. Um, now let's enhance this plan. Well, enhancing the plan may be a different way to market in the community. Uh, maybe we're, we're, we're focused on some networking events to try to get some catering. Um, maybe we're, we're, we're involved in different groups around the, around the, around the city, around in our area. Um, what it's not is enhanced with, Hey, let's all of a sudden start selling women's shoes because 51% of our customers are women. Got to still stay with, stay within that brand. So, um, as crazy as it sounds, it's really not anything that is going to be on a bullet point in your resume. It's not on your LinkedIn profile. It's can you Will you follow a proven plan? Will you implement it? Will you execute it? Um, And then be able to enhance from there. Um, That's it. And again, it's really, really that simple. Um, Part of the process once you start vetting a franchise is obviously understanding your role as an owner with that particular brand, um, all the different facets of it. And from start to finish, from the time we introduce someone to a franchise until they're ready to sign a franchise agreement, that may take six to eight weeks. It is incredibly thorough. And part of that is so when we're all the way at the end, because it's easy to sit there and go, oh, you know, I I can definitely implement a a plan if I believe in it. Well, that's that's part of the length of time with this vetting of the franchisors is that you really understand all aspects of it. You have had a chance to talk to everyone within the franchise, um, from the person that answers the phone to the CEO. You had a chance to talk to other owners. Um, you kind of walk away at that end of six, six to eight week process with the really just kind of the confidence. You're like, yeah, this is it. We, we, we tell people you'll never actually make a decision at the end of the process. It will become crystal clear. You will get there and go, yes, this is it. Let's go. Um, that allows you to have that confidence in the plan. So now if you're somebody that you can really say, hey, I find the right thing, I can definitely implement it and I can execute it. 
once it's up and running, I can I can now use my skill set to find some ways to enhance and grow it as much as you want. Not everybody wants this the, as big of a business. Um, we, we'll have a, a whole nother episode just on scaling and how how you can how you can grow these things. Um, but for now, just understand. Congratulations on the fantastic success you've had in your career, no matter what it may be. If you're talking to us, if you're talking to a franchisor, it's because you've been very, very successful. Congratulations. But understand, though, that all those things are going to help you. The absolute number one thing the franchise is going to look for in an owner. Are you willing to, are you able to follow a proven plan? If so, franchise ownership and the success therein could be for you. So that uh, we hope will, will help you kind of understand and, and really kind of bring it down to the, to the basics. Um, we hope that this helped. If you would like to learn more about franchise ownership, if you'd like to see which of the 500 plus franchisors we are partnered with could be the right fit for you, let's talk. Um, please hit us up at the website, our website, francoach.net. Fancy little contact form there. Fire that off to us. We'll get a call scheduled. Feel free to follow us anywhere on social media as well. Thank you so much for tuning in. Um, we hope if this intrigues you at all, reach out to us. Take that first step today towards creating your better tomorrow. Thanks for tuning in to Fran Coaches Franchising 101 podcast. Have a fantastic day, and we'll talk with you soon.